Reaching nearly seven feet tall, the blue or sometimes amber-eyed bipedal dogman is a very dangerous and fearsome cryptid. Its head is a cross between a dog and an oversized wolf. It has the torso of a man and the legs of a canine. Dogmen have a fearsome howl that sounds like a cross between a wolf and a human scream. Encounters have occurred both day and night, but the majority of the experiences happen during the daytime. Although the initial sightings of the Dogman occurred in Michigan, giving it the label of the Michigan Dogman, there have been numerous sightings worldwide in the thousands that have documented this creature not only in rural areas, but also in densely populated cities. In one case, a witness has claimed to have seen a Dogman in New York's Central Park. There are very few witness accounts that claim to have been attacked by a Dogman. Those that have not been attacked have stated that they felt as though the creature was very aggressive, stalking them and in some cases chasing them with the intention of killing and eating them. Their aggressive behavior, their lack of fear of human settlements or urban areas, their daytime activity makes them an incredibly dangerous cryptid. Considered to be the origin of the Dogman legend, the Michigan Dogman was first witnessed in 1887 in Wexford County, Michigan. Two lumberjacks working deep in the woods saw a creature which they described as having a man's body and a dog's head. There would not be another documented encounter with the Dogman until approximately 50 years later in Paris, Michigan, when Robert Fortney was attacked by five wild dogs and stated that one of the five dogs walked on two legs. It was after the 1937 encounter that more reports of similar creatures began to come into Allegheny County in the 1950s. And later in the 1960s in Manistee and Cross Village. Linda S. Godfrey in her book The Beast of Bray Road would use the Manistee encounters to draw similarities between the Michigan Dogman and the Beast of Bray Road. The Dogman was unknown to most of the modern world until the late 20th century. It was said to be stalking the Manistee River area since the days of the Odoe tribes. In fact, there are mentions of these creatures that go back hundreds of years before the United States was colonized. Although it's difficult to pinpoint the first time these creatures were mentioned, even in tribal legends, it's plausible that this creature has a history that goes back at least 200 years. More recently, websites such as dogmanencounters.com has mentioned a second type of dogman. There is considered to be the standard canine type dogman, which has the head of a dog or a wolf-like dog, the torso of a man, and the legs of a canine. But there is this Type 3 Dogman that's mentioned quite often now. It has similarities of a Sasquatch. It has a shorter muzzle and possibly has the legs of a man. So it's more human than it is canine. The most aggressive type of Dogman is considered to be the canine type. Although the Type 3 is still considered to be dangerous, it doesn't appear so far to be as aggressive at stalking humans. Besides their potential for aggression, there are two similarities between the two different types of dogmen. They have very sharp canine teeth and they both have claws on the ends of their extremities. The more traditional canine type dogmen tend to be the quicker or the faster of the two types. Their anatomy makes for their ability to be extremely fast on all fours. In some cases, quite easily able to keep pace with a vehicle, which makes them faster than a traditional canine. Dogmen are considered to be incredibly powerful, although they exercise this power in a different way from, say, a Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Dogmen have the ability to tear apart animals quite easily and it's unknown as to their ability to break into structures or to push or throw things around. They have appendages that lend themselves to more animalistic behavior, 
unlike a Bigfoot which has the ability, for example, to throw rocks. Of the two types of Dogman, the Type 3 Dogman is considered to be physically more powerful, although somewhat slower as mentioned previously. Quickly becoming a worldwide phenomenon, the Dogman encounters are quite well documented. There is a number of amazing witness accounts that are listed on dogmanencounters.com. I'll make sure to post a link in the description and a pinned comment for the websites that I've used in this video. You should check them out if you're interested in learning more about this amazing cryptid. Detroit, the quaint town of Holly has long attracted visitors to its Christmas theme festivals. In recent years, it's the surrounding woods that's attracting attention. And growing up here in Michigan, I have heard mythological stories about the man dog of Holly or the dog man of Holly, never realizing that it would be a reality or that it truly existed. Well, Holly is, you know, kind of an odd place. You know, just one of those places that has a very remote area to it. And, uh, you know, that's why there are creatures lurking out there. Within these woods, there are rumors about a monster, a creature that sometimes runs on four legs, sometimes stands on two, a bizarre manimal, part man, part mutt, dogman. The Dogman and Beast of Bray Road seem to be two different creatures. The Beast of Bray Road appears much bigger and seems to be more of your traditional werewolf, whereas the Dogman has a supernatural reputation with it as well, that it's more of a spirit-based creature. They have the ability to do you harm outside of just clawing and slashing at you. It's not flesh and blood. You couldn't kill it like you could possibly the beast of Bray Road. We do know of over 100 dogman sightings, and it is a widespread phenomenon, not just in Michigan, uh, all across the United States and actually all across the world. There have been sightings of dogman-like creatures uh, in Argentina, in, in France, so it, this is not just an American phenomenon. The idea of a canine-human hybrid is very old. The ancient Egyptians saw Anubis, their god of the underworld, as a jackal-headed man. The Michigan Woods, home turf of the legendary Dog Man. I think it originated with the fear of these forests as great unknown places. The pioneers would hear these sounds and unexplained noises and movement in the woods. And when they caught a glimpse of these creatures, they didn't look like anything they had ever seen before. Rumors about a giant man-dog continue to circulate to the present day because of encounters like the one Repo Man Jeff Cornelius had in 2005. Meet Jeff Cornelius. He's a creature of the night himself. Jeff is a repo man, working the night shift, reclaiming cars from deadbeat buyers. It's a job that can take you down desolate back roads with no sign of anything friendly for miles. You know, I've always felt comfortable in the woods. I'm not really scared of driving alone at night, you know. It's how I've always done my work. Jeff's not really a kind of a scaredy cat guy, you know. He's kind of a big burly dude. He's going to take you out or he's going to die trying. The only thing Jeff worries about is a delinquent car owner with a loaded 45. It was past midnight on a cold autumn night in 2005. Jeff was on the outskirts of Holly, Michigan, looking for a Cadillac. Some slacker's time had run out. There was a bright moon out that night. You could see really well. Where I was looking for the vehicle, it's very remote. I turned on the driveway, it took me, it was probably two to three hundred yards. It was really creepy setting, you know, it was late at night, you know, the moon was out, you know, all the crickets and stuff. The house had bars on it, which, it, it was just odd to me, it kind of freaked me out. The 
when I got out, I'm in the habit of leaving my door open. Whenever I check for repossession, I always leave my door open just in case. The house looked abandoned, but Jeff's gut instinct told him he wasn't alone. So I got out to look in the window. I had my flashlight and I was looking inside the building. And I heard something snap. When the job suddenly goes south, Jeff doesn't usually panic. Not this time. When I think of that night, I think of the scariest thing I ever saw. I was definitely skeptic of monsters growing up. Never believed in them. The things that Jeff sees as a repo man are the real life scary stuff. They're the people coming at you with a two by four in the middle of the night or hearing a click of a shotgun. When I locked eyes with me, both froze. It had ears on its head and it was standing on two legs. The legs were bent. It was pretty formidable looking. And that's when it growled at me. It sounded like nothing I ever heard before. Deep, you know. It was coming at me. Directly at me. I jumped in my truck, closed the door. I was scared. My heart was pounding for sure, you know. I just want to get out of there before the thing, you know, busted through my window or something. Jeff gunned his tow truck down the dark road, feeling he'd narrowly escaped. If I wouldn't have seen it, it would have definitely attacked me 100%. When Jeff came and told me that night, um, I believed what had happened because I could see that he was genuinely afraid, that something spooked him, something scared him. Since radio stations in Michigan first broadcast news of the Dogman in the late 1980s, more than 500 encounters have been reported. After his experience, Jeff Cornelius dropped the Cadillac account. He never wanted to return to that house again. When I'm in the woods repoing vehicles, I try to definitely be a little more, you know, aware of my surroundings so as to not let anything sneak up on me again. I know what I saw that night, and what I saw was the man dog. 